Hi guys, welcome back to Lost in My Library. My name is Kate and today I'm doing my review on A Day Late and a Dollar Short by Terry McMillan. As you know, the last book I read was It's Not All Downhill by Terry McMillan. And let me tell you, I didn't like this book as much as I liked It's Not All Downhill from here. I gave, ended up giving this book three stars. It's just, mm, I'm, I think what the problem is with Terry McMillan. And I don't know if this is every single book. Obviously, I probably need to read a third book to make sure that this is what her style. But everything seems to just tie up in a nice little neat little bow by the end of everything. Like, there's a thing, uh, the characters aren't super likable in this book. And they can get on your, they can annoy you the entire time. And then in the end, it's like, oh, okay, here's the thing to make you like them again. Okay, like, <laughs> they annoyed me. I didn't like them the entirety of this book. And then you just turn around and be like, oh, here's the thing that makes, you should make, who uh, makes you want to like them, just one little thing, and you're just like, okay, but mm, I didn't like them the whole, pretty much the entirety of the book, and there are characters you are meant to hate, you are most definitely supposed to hate the entirety of the book. They are awful characters, and Good on her that, like, none of them got redemption arcs the entirety of the book. None of them got redemption arcs. The only people that are sort of unlikable that did get re re redeemed, got redemption arcs, are our six main characters. We have Viola and Cecil who are, or are married. They're separated. Um, because Cecil, we're going to get on to this, Cecil is a cheating lying, wishy-washy man, and I don't appreciate it. He, he's been cheating on Viola for a long time, and if you know me, I despise people who cheat. And then, like, try to be like, I'm sorry, like, there's, like, your, your, your pregnancy was so difficult on you, and, like, I just have needs. Like, you are such a terrible person if, like, you cheat on your pregnant wife, heavily pregnant wife, who can't do that because she's heavily pregnant with your child. It's just... And Cecil is so wishy-washy. I wish he would have just chose. <laughs> and it he just... It didn't feel like he chose until the main thing at the end happened, and then he finally chose, but it's because he can't be with Viola anymore by the end of it. And you're just like, you're only choose, you've only made this solid choice because you can't be with Viola anymore. And you're just like, stop being so wishy-washy, and it's annoying. And then you have Par uh, we'll start, okay, we'll start with the kids. There's Paris, who has a son. Um, I like her the best. I think she's the best character of the entire bunch. I very much enjoy Paris. Um, it shows that she is, people have problems. And that's what you see throughout the entirety of the book, is that people have problems. Um, Paris has a drug addiction problem. Her son almost got a girl pregnant and then got a girl pregnant, a different girl pregnant. Um, and then there was some talk about that. There was talk about abortion, uh, but I think the abortion talk was handled well, I think. I think that was handled well. It was very short. Do I think that was necessarily needed? No. I don't think that was needed. I think if we hadn't had some of these side plots, I think that Terry McMillan would have done a much better job of reining everything in. We didn't need 
five million different things going on to focus on. And that's the problem with this book, is there's too many things going on that the focus is just everywhere. Everywhere. Now, if her intention was to give everyone this, like, small little problem thing, okay, hmm, I don't really agree that you did all that well, because, like, two kids of another, like, we'll get to Charlotte and her problems, she's the motley, <laughs> well, actually, I don't like Cecil. Charlotte is next up, like, on my I don't like list, right above Cecil. Um, but she has three kids, and two of them, their issues that they have ADD. And then she has a gay son. And it's made to be like, okay, if we're going to have problems, it's a thing that a lot of kids have and struggle with, and a gay son that she doesn't agree with, and there are t homophobic things happening. Uh, not very often, but there is some homophobia in this book, so trigger warning for that as well. And then we have Lewis, who um, can't hold down a job, who go has gone to jail several times um, for drunk driving. He has an alcohol problem. And then he beats the husband of his ex-wife, her new husband, because he beat his his actual biological son. Um, I agree with that. I actually like Lewis. Lewis is up there. I think Lewis and Viola are, like, right next to each other on my likability. I do like Viola, but I think Viola's problem is <laughs> she <laughs> doesn't... She sees the problems that each of these kids are struggling with, but yet she doesn't confront them about any of these problems. Like, like you could help, like, confront these. I think a lot of problems would be solved if you confront your kids. You know what's going on. You know what's what you've done wrong. Why are you not confronting your kids about these things? You're a grown woman. Why? Why are you doing that? I will never know. She wrote letters before she died. And she knew about all these problems. And it's basically to tell the rest of the people all the problems that each other has been having. And you're like, why aren't you... Why didn't you mention any of this? Why aren't you... Why didn't you try and help? <sighs> it's a problem. But I do like Lewis. I think Lewis is a nice character. Um, his just main thing is he's an alcoholic, but he is loyal. He, um, he does try and get his life together by the end of it. I think a lot of it is just the bad cards he's been dealt, um, in life, really. I think that's a lot of the, what boils down to. Then we got Janelle, who has the most problems in this book. Janelle is, like, under Lewis and Violet. I like her more than Charlotte. Janelle has a kid um, from another man, her new husband, she's basically a gold digger, kind of, kind of, she's just doesn't want to work, <laughs> is my, is her thing, but her, okay, trigger warnings, trigger warnings, I'm about to go dark, trigger warnings, her husband has been sleeping with her 13 year old daughter since she was seven because they don't have good sex. This he this guy has been doing it to all of his children. Every single one of them. Even though this wasn't his biological daughter, he's been doing it to everyone. The bad thing is there's a police officer. This story doesn't get resolved all that much. Um I I would have liked a better resolution of this story. Um other than the fact that she got divorced to this guy, she has a restraining order on this guy. I would have wanted to see, like, okay, this is what happened with the case. Because, like, we got a few months later, like, did your daughter talk to the police? Because they needed that to convict um, him. And then she said, well, we could have talked, you know, to see if the other 
daughters would have testified against her dad. And, oh my gosh, all of that problem was just not handled all that well, I don't think. The granddaughter moved in with Viola when her mom found out and just like <sighs> yeah it it was not a good situation i and janelle was very like she couldn't believe it at first but she did take janelle uh, her daughter shanice's side with everything i think janelle is is a weaker character in the grand scheme of things. When you have big characters, Janelle is a very weak character. And then we have Charlotte. Charlotte, as I said, has the three kids. She has two daughters who have ADD. That wasn't talked about very well. And has a gay son. That wasn't talked about very well. And their storylines were very weak. And nothing was handled very well. And she hated her big sister because she thought her mom loved her sister more. And... But she gets a lot of attention, too. So it's like, girl, girl, you would just, like, her mom would just, uh, I just didn't like Charlotte all that much, either. I think we come to the end talking about the kids. So, three stars. Everything's tied up in a nice little bow. And I don't, I, there's, when you have so many problems like this, and you're like, every little problem is tied up in a nice little neat little bow. No. You just don't get over all of that very quickly. I don't understand. Something's just not coming together very well. Because life's not like that. Life doesn't just end every single problem with a neat little bow. And that's the problem, I think, I have with Terry McMillan's book. So, that has been my review. I'm giving it three stars. Um, these slice of life books are definitely not my thing. So maybe I shouldn't read these kind of books. Maybe I should just stick with fantasy. Um, but I have enjoyed these more lighthearted books. <laughs> I'd say the lighthearted. There's so many problems with the People have so many like problems. But can... Comparing it to, like, The Hate You Give, which is definitely, like, hard-hitting, 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 problem after problem after problem has a message it wants to put out, this book is different. Um, it's also a product of its time, because it was written in 1994. We can still critique it for what it was. Um, so, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one.